Guts's Rage is an interesting game on the Dreamcast library. Developed by Ukes, published by Eidos, released in the year 2000, it's one of those how did this get localized type of games. Now, to be fair, the Berserk anime was released in 1997. I want you to think though, this came out three years before the Berserk manga would finally come out in America. So they had more confidence in this video game than the manga. So that should say something really, really big about this game. Like, this game should be a five-star game, right? Well, sort of. Oh! This game should be noted for how many voice-acted cutscenes there are and how well-constructed the story is. The fact that the voice acting isn't terrible is commendable in an era where video game characters were either mostly silent like Mario or annoying as Sin like Tails in Sonic Adventure. Combine that with the fact that Berserk's storyline is very well told makes it a game that could certainly be considered a hidden gem just on that merit alone. Combine that with the soundtrack which was done by none other than Berserk series composer Susumu Hirasawa, you so far have a recipe for what should be success. By the way, personal favorite tracks of mine from the OST of this game are Zod 2 and Forces 2, which both encapsulate a certain epic feeling. It's a feeling that Berserk fans will know all too well, and other gamers will just find the OST to be great to listen to while slaying legions of soldiers and monsters. However, Berserk has a couple of major flaws that hold it back from being a true gem. For starters, the gameplay. For a time being, Berserk was considered the bloodiest game on the block. I mean, the game has a warning screen when you boot it up. However, it's clear that the developers may have been paying closer attention to the visuals of the game rather than how the game played itself. You see, once the game gets started, you notice the one giant flaw with, with it, and that's the Dragon Slayer sword that Guts carries with him gets stopped by walls. It may not seem like a giant deal at first, but unfortunately there are a lot of tight cornered hallways in this game, meaning that you are oftentimes left attempting to swing your sword only to fail and then presumably get hit by an enemy. Now it's not so bad, most enemies can be led away from these enclosed hallways and taken to a more open area. Combine that with your two main side weapons, Guts' signature cannon arm, which acts the way fans of the series would imagine it would, and the mini-bombs, the combat becomes pretty fun. Until the camera starts acting up, and when it does, it's frustrating to say the least, because you have no camera control. A perfect example of the poor camera is when you fight Zod the Immortal midway through the game. The issue with this boss is you're supposed to slide out of his shoulder charge in time for him to hit the walls of the town and be stunned so you can rush him with attacks. Unfortunately, due to the camera, this becomes a near impossible task to accomplish and you're left trying to rush him head on which doesn't work because he takes too much damage. Though thankfully Zod is a near end game boss and the combat is still great fun due to one major thing being nailed, when Guts does hit with the Dragon Slayer, he hits hard. How hard you may ask? Oftentimes bodies are cut in half due to the strength of Guts' blows. Also you are notice right below your health bar is a red bar and that bar is called your rage bar. Basically enough in every fight Guts gains rage which eventually builds to him entering enraged mode, and once he enters it, he becomes impervious to damage, dishes out more pain, and best of all, your sword can go through walls now. I have to say, with this in mind, the combat, which can be a little flawed, is still a lot of fun. Alright, so the combat's a little bit clunky, but you can still have a good time. What about that story I talked up earlier, right? Well... Uh, sort of, here's the main issue with that. If you don't like, slash, aren't familiar with the Berserk storyline, then chances are you're not going to care for it. 
or probably even be lost. You see, the thing is, is this takes place in between volumes 22 and 23 of Berserk, which is pretty far into the story, and they don't exactly go about explaining who these characters are, like who the main character Guts is, or who Casca is. They just kind of assume you're familiar with Berserk. So, that story that's excellently told and everything, unfortunately enough, kind of falls flat with that in mind. Overall, can I recommend Berserk? Yes and no. If you're a diehard Dreamcast fan, or just a diehard Berserk fan, then yes, totally go for it. To everyone else, it's just kind of a pretty good action game. Nothing spectacular, you're not missing out on anything if you don't play it, but it's pretty good. Overall, I give it 3 out of 5 stars. So that was my review, you guys. What do you guys think of this game? Is it good? Do I suck? Uh, tell me in the comments below. Be sure to like this video, be sure to subscribe, and be sure to click on one of my annotations to the left of me. Have a wonderful day, YouTube, and peace. Also follow me on Twitter.